African drums are talking. Spotted sunlight fades from the floor of the forest and daytime twilight becomes a wall of inky blackness. The harmless chatter of monkeys changes to the moan of the hyena. The soft calling of birds to the snarling cry of the hunting cat. The beauty of the forest is blotted out. Death stalks abroad and the night becomes hideous with the screams of its unwilling victims. Beauty and death go hand in hand. This is Africa. In the village of the leopard men, Ifabe, the mysterious native girl who has just broken the charm of death cast on Jack by Melini, the witch doctor, hands the professor a beautiful golden goblet with strange carvings on it. Professor Edwards identifies the cup as a very old Egyptian work with Roman lettering and of great value. The girl promises to tell him where there are many more, but first the party must rest for a while as the place is many days' march from the village. We find the professor and Jack just awakening after a full 12 hours' sleep. Hello, Jack. You up over and about already? What time is it? Four o'clock, sir. Is it? Hi, George. Hmm. Well, I slept the clock around. Soon be sunset. By the way, how do you feel now? Oh, fine. I've been waiting for the last 15 minutes to ask you what happened. Last time, last thing I remember was... Fabe telling me to sleep. I guess I did. Yes, you did. Soundly. She saved your life, my boy. Uh, Fabe? Mm-hmm. Oh, hello, Anguero. Mm. <laughs> that smells good. Banana cakes, eh? Oh, good buona. Yeah. Let me get my boots on. I'll be with you. Any water, Jay? Yes, in that wooden bowl over there. A little buona all well one time, huh? Yes, thanks, and go. But I haven't the faintest idea of what happened. Which doctor... Him make him devil fetish. Yes, I remember that much. The whole of my right side seemed to be paralyzed. I think I remember the pain moving into my left leg, too. Oh, well, hello, Lorna. Oh, Jack, it's so good to see you well again. Are you all right now, darling? No bad effects? Never felt better, dear. I'm just trying to find out what happened. Perhaps you can tell me. Don't you think we'd better forget about it, dear? The whole thing seems like a nightmare now. Let's just be thankful and Goro brought a Fabi along when he did. But how did Fabi come oh, to... Oh, forget about it for now, Jack. We'll discuss it later. Ah. Well, that war took the cobwebs out of my head. You know, there's something interesting I want to discuss with you. Oh, it's something thrilling, Jack. And matches perfectly with what Nguro said was going to happen. You mean about the help? The buried money? Yes, but it isn't money that's buried. Here, take a look at this cup. Isn't it beautiful? Great Scott, sir. Where did you get that? Why, it's solid gold. Yeah? What do you make of the carvings? Well, it's certainly Egyptian work. But this, um... This, uh... Well, Latin? <laughs> Had me guessing for a while. But I think I made some sense out of it. What does it say on it, Father? Well, as far as I can make out, the cup evidently belonged to a set of gold plate that was owned by a gentleman uh, called Septimus. He was the governor of some unheard of state. But where did it come from? How did you get it, sir? If Robbie brought it. Good Lord, that woman again? She seems to be in everything. I'm afraid she's going to be in a lot more before we can get rid of her. She made Father promise to help her in some mysterious quest before she'd attempt to... Well, before she'd help you. Oh, I see. Well, that was rather... Better fill up on these banana cakes while they're hot, people. Very good. Guru cooked them. I had mine in my hut before you folks were about. How does he make them, Father? With uh, flour from dried bananas. Native dish. Now, come on, Jack. I'm a bit worried about that promise you had to make, sir. It puts you in a rather awkward position. Well, we probably certainly chose the right moment to ask it. But now, uh, I'm not at all sorry she did. She says there are a lot more gold cups where that one came from. But the whispering forest of death she spoke of, what does she mean by that? It sounds horrible. Well, it's a native name for part of unexplored jungle. I've heard it spoken of. Fantastic tales of voices that speak from nowhere. You know, the usual native chatter. Well, what about this forest? That's where we have to go. Oh. Any white man been in there, sir? No, not that I know of. The natives won't go near the place. But beyond what I've told you, I'm as ignorant as you are on the subject. Don't even know where it's located? Well, somewhere on the border. 
And from what Ifabi says, it's out of the jurisdiction of the white man. Ooh, I don't like the name of that forest. Oh, hmm? Bana, neat snake woman, tell them plenty, huh? Yes, and go. I've never known her to be wrong. But there's one thing we must be very careful of. We must never actually trust Ifabi. Apparently, yes. But she's a combination of breeds that I'm afraid don't make for stability. There's a lot about her I don't like. Are you expecting trouble from her, sir? No, until... And if we find this cache of gold, I'm positive the moment her eyes contact anything of real value, she can't help herself. It's, it's natural. We can't blame her. It's in the blood. Buona moon witch, she comes. Oh, here she comes now. Now, don't forget. Implicit trust until... Oh, come in, Ifabe. You have rested well, white man. Yes, completely. And I'm anxious to hear more of this journey you wish us to undertake. We begin with the rising moon. For the keepers of the treasure have left their huts, and we must follow them. Oh, the young Buana is well again. Yes. I'm told I have you to thank for being on my feet once more. It is of no matter. For Ifabe has need of the white man's help. Well, who are these keepers of the treasure? They are the ones whose place it is to visit the whispering forest of death and talk with the spirits of those who once were. With the passing of the four seasons, the waning of a moon, these two men leave their huts for that purpose. Hmm. Yes, I've heard of such things. They keep the secret of the treasure in one family and visit it once a year to see that it's safe. Eh? And no man may follow... Because of the devils who guard the way. Well, then, how did you come by this cup of gold, Ifabe? There were three brothers, white man. They were called the keepers of the treasure. One of them brought the cup to me as a gift. Mm. And now there are only two keepers, eh? Yes. They guard their secret well. The other two found out, eh? Evidently. So, uh, you don't know the exact location? Ifabe knows... That it lies below the surface of the earth in a box, which rests between two upright stones. These stones have a writing upon them which no man may read. But the way through the forest is dark, and the keepers of the treasure know the secret path. Mm, which will make it easier, of course. Well, does anyone in the village know of your intentions? I have caused it to be known that I visit the souls of the dead, which is true. For there are many in the whispering forest of death. Nguro. Hi, Buana. You've heard what Ifabi has to say. Well, thank you. Buana, him say go, Nguro say go. Maybe catch him forest devil, make him fight, huh? <laughs> That's all you live for, in the hope there'll be a fight. And we may catch a forest devil at that. Well... Any suggestions, people? Personally, Father, I'd like to know more about this forest with the spooky name. Does Ifabi know anything about it? Ifabi knows that the breath of eternal sleep whispers unceasingly through its branches. And even the jackals may not stay within the reach of its perfumed breath. Mmm, perfumed breath, eh? Well, aren't you afraid to go in there, Ifabi? Death holds no terror for Ifabi. Since life and death are but one in many ways. Mm -hmm. well, all right, then. It's settled. When do you want to start? It is well to begin now, as the sun is leaving the earth. Ifabi will meet you where the trail joins the mountain. Where does the trail begin? To the east of the village, and will lead along the roots of the mountains. Your warrior will find it. The keepers of the treasure will not hide their marks. For all men know it is forbidden to follow. If Abby goes now, you will see her when the face of my father shines upon the earth. Hmm. Well, that starts us on the move again. Feel up to it, Lorna? Yes, I think I'm just as anxious to get there as you are. Hmm. Well, we haven't anything to pack. How about supplies, sir? Have to trust to luck and hope there's meat to be found along the road. What's that you have there, Nguro? Him plenty banana. Make him bread, Buana. Mm, banana flour. Well, you people can have all the meat you want. I'll take and grow a cake. <laughs> well, have you left anything in your hut that you might need, Lorna? Oh, I haven't anything to leave, Father, unless it was some of the dirt from the cave. Hear that leopard, sir? Yeah. Sounds as if it's been wounded. Drum's talking, too. Buana, 
Him much doctor go for be plenty dead. Look, Coley, say Melini die. Melini dead? Hmm. Well, let's have a look. Hey, George, yes, they're pulling down the walls of his hut. There'll be a dance of death in the village tonight. Does it say how he died, Father? No, they're merely acquainting other witch doctors of the fact. But I think I can make a good guess. Molini and Ifabi practically ran this village between them. I was wondering how they were going to split up. <laughs> he evidently knew she was going after the treasure. I still a traveling companion to look forward to, sir. <laughs> yeah, so you see what we have to look out for. Hello. Yeah, there's another message going out. The natives are gathering in the square. They seem excited about something. Bwana, look only say white man dow kill Melini. What does he say, mm-hmm. Father? That the drum says the white man's medicine killed Melini. Quick, everybody. We've got to move out right away. I'll bet the chief's son started that. Well, they're starting down this way, sir. We can't leave now without being seen. Cut away through the back of the hut. We can get into the high grass before they get here. Use the big sword, Nguro. Aye, Buona. There, that'll do. Come on, I'll lead the way, Nguro. Follow him, Lorna. Have we got everything, Jack? I think so. All right. Let's go. 